In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and then we will read verse 17. Now, I've received, I've received a bunch of angry Calvinists who got so mad at our video because I pointed out that James White gave a challenge. Now, he gave a challenge that I debunked, and I used manuscript evidence. I used manuscript evidence to debunk his challenge. He had a TR only challenge. Now, I'm not going to expound on it here because then I'm just going to waste so much time. Please look at my video where it's called, titled KJV Pastor Corrects Popular Greek Debater. Now, James White, he's gaining popularity among Calvinists concerning his debates. To be quite honest, though, he is not that famous. John Piper, John MacArthur are the more famous bunt. James White only received attention because of his debates. And Calvinists, they love to debate. And they hate the King James only yep. position. That's they right. hate that to a T. Yep. They want to debunk it. They want to argue against it. And they use sarcastic tones of voice, yeah. like Richard Dawkins, right. pretending that they win an argument as long as they use a sarcastic tone. Yeah. So then what's very odd to me is that when your pastor uses a sarcastic tone of voice yeah. on that video, yeah. then these Calvinists, they start crying. And they say, oh, you know, he has no love. Yeah. Now, look at the hypocrisy right here. Right. I consider that great hypocrisy. Now, here's another thing right here. A second thing is this. A second thing is that don't go to James White most recent debates. You know one thing I noticed? Ever since the new IFB and all these people started to pop out, he started to act more courteous, more respectful, and not. I was actually shocked. When I saw the debate, I was surprised on James White Manor. I was like, wow, this guy is actually a nice guy. What happened? You know why? Because he actually went on a spree against some weird cultic fringe who are anti-Semite and post-trib. And these guys, they had a wicked, hateful attitude, these cultic pastors. They wished that sodomites, they rejoiced when certain people get killed, and they insisted that some people were forever damned for hell and could not get saved. So James White pointed out the hateful attitude of these cultish pastors, and he said, we got to win them over with love, and then we got to deal with them with respect and all that. But if you look at his older debates, he did not have that kind of tone of voice. He had sarcasm. He had that uh, looking down on you attitude in his older debates. And you guys who watch James White's debates more than I do, you know that more than I do, with the Holy Spirit convicting inside you. If you truly believe that you're regenerated by the Holy Ghost, according to your tulip method, you can't deny the Holy Spirit convicting you of that. Okay, there is no doubt about that. So here's the thing, is that in his recent debates, he looks like the nice guy. But if you look at the older one, he used sarcasm. He used that belittling attitude which I don't like. So because of that, fair is fair. So what did I do? I used sarcasm in return. I used sarcasm. Because what ticks your pastor off, and it is rightful indignation. Is it not rightful indignation when some bully picks on somebody and picks on somebody who believes in right doctrine, who believes in a perfect Bible, and then some bully picks on him that you're not as educated as I am? That's why... I have every right to use sarcasm against such a person. Right. Rightfully so. I cannot apologize for that. Now, the thing is this, is that they're going to say, oh, he's mean, he's screaming, he acts like a 12-year-old child, blah, blah, blah. You know why? They're thinking this is the problem. That shows me your kind of witnessing attitude and your spiritual walk for Jesus and your preaching must be very, very light. Because look at preaching in the Bible. Yeah. Now let me ask you this simple question. If you look at preaching in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, where Jeremiah was preaching hard, Ezekiel called them a whore, and then Isaiah was really ripping them apart, and Hosea had to marry a whore to prove his case to Israel. You're a whore. That's what he told them. And Jesus Christ at Matthew 23 he was very childish in calling them twofold more the child of hell than yourselves in saying you swallow, you strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. 
How childish of Jesus. If I went to some Calvinist room, and they were selling modern Bibles right there, and then I started to take out my belt and beat up all the Calvinists and overturn the tables of their modern Bibles, let me ask you this question. A lot of you would normally think, Pastor, you're out of your mind, you're childish, right? Yeah, yeah and I would think so too. I would never do that. But Jesus Christ, he went inside a temple, beating up all the people with the whip, overturning the tables. You call him 12-year-old and childish, huh? Let me ask you a bigger question right here. Jesus got mad, why? Because they corrupted God's house. If you corrupt God's word, which is higher than his own name, don't you think the anger should be tripled? Now, you got to realize this. Where, where I'm acting like a 12-year-old online is extremely mild then. I actually should quadruple it. I wasn't even close to Jesus' level where he got mad corrupting God's house. But when you corrupt his word, which is higher than his own name, then yeah, when you corrupt God's name, they stoned you to death at the Old Testament. But the book of Psalms, he said, thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. You don't think I should get rightfully angry about that? How about that? So I'm actually very nice in comparison. So you got to realize this. In preaching, what do you see? You see sarcasm. In preaching, you see someone acting mean. And yes, even what do you see? What you would like to call childish. So before you accuse me of being childish, you better call Jesus that. And you better do that with a clear conscience. You better do that with a clear conscience. By the way, in the video, you know who you're seeing? You're not seeing a debater. If I'm in a debate platform, obviously, I'm not going to scream on top of my lungs. In a debate platform, it should be in a respectful manner. Yeah. It should be done where it's fair is fair, looking on both sides of the argument. In a YouTube video, do you think I'm in a debate platform right here? James White, you get a turn, sir. Please go ahead right here. No, I'm, I'm preaching every Sunday here. As a preacher, I'm not going to get all beta male right here and go light on you. Yeah. But I think that's how Calvinists preach. Calvinists, you know what your problem is, you Calvinists? You James White worshipers, pretty much, you confuse preaching with debating. Yeah. Yeah. If you, and that's why your spiritual life is pretty, and your preaching is probably weak. Amen. Preaching should be very different from debating. Yeah. Debating, you play fair, fair. You act respectful to the opponent. You give him a fair turn. In preaching, you're doing God's word and you have to attack the enemy. You have to give no respect because God is no respecter of persons. You got to do that. You got to distinguish what Paul did debating in the synagogues. And you got to debate with witnessing to a person where you have to act even nicer in witnessing. You have to act even nicer in witnessing compared to debating. So maybe James White witnessing, it does sound a little rude because he uses it in the debate tone of voice. See, there's a distinction with witnessing, debating, and preaching. If you don't live your life like that, it's going to be all unbalanced, and you think that one character fits with everything. No, God, he wants it at different things, at different levels, different times, different situations to bring him greater glory. Now, what is your argument against me? This was completely ad hominem. All they, I looked up, I was, if I'm wrong, then please post a, a tweet link or a video link where James White specifically, okay? Don't give me other videos, please. Give me a specific one where he addressed my challenge response, specifically right here. You want to play fair, right? I did a direct response to his challenge. Give me a direct tweet. Give me a direct video where he, com where he answered directly my challenge. No, it was a tweet that was ad hominem. You know what his tweet was? This is his tweet. He used a Richard Dawkins tone of voice where people, he thinks people are just going to agree and laugh along with him as long as he points out some kind of tone where it attacks my character as being mean. That's not how you win an argument. Didn't you know a guy could be very mean, but he could be right about an argument? Being, look, do you know, I thought you were a debater. I thought you bragged about over 100 debates. You should know better. This is his tweet, okay? If you want to see 
and here the very en- essence of cultic KJV is uh, KJV onlyism. Look no further. Twelve-year-old behavior combined with outrageously bad research and argumentation. Okay, uh, scroll down and where, where, huh? How, how is it bad research? How is it bad argumentation? How? 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 You know why? Because when I bring up certain manuscript evidence right here, yeah. he does not challenge or address specific issues. Yeah. He doesn't even address his own challenge right here. He doesn't even mention his own challenge right here. Mm-hmm. You know what he did? He tried to point out where Gene Kim was like going like this yeah. or raising his tone of voice. And by that, he wins the argument. He, he wins the debate. If that is your debate, fine, win the debate, yeah. okay? People who follow and fall prey into that should know better. Yeah. Now, if you want the truth, there is one preacher who said this. If you want the truth that bad, you wouldn't care how the truth is delivered to you. If someone spit at you, kicked at you, punched at you, you wouldn't care. You would crawl through that bloody mess and will not care what people do to you and just grab the truth. Amen. You know what I want to challenge you? You don't even have to like me. I, you know what I all honestly want? What I honestly want you to do is to like and adore and love the King James Bible as a pure, perfect Amen. word of God. I could care less what you think and love about me because it's not about me. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. And he elevated his word higher than his own name. So that should be, that should be elevated and loved and adored. That's who I care about. Amen. And that is my loving response to those trolls who hate me, who attack me, Criticize me and use sarcasm. I honestly want you to love that book more than you love Gene Kim. If I look like a 12-year-old for Jesus Christ and you become a King James only person, worth it all. Worth it all. Okay, so this is my answer. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, and let's close. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of what? Sincerity. But as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ. There is one thing you cannot deny about my character when I'm really putting all my energy onto this when I talk about the King James Bible. You know I'm being very sincere and honest with you. See, lay it out all in the open. I'm honest. I'm not going to hide it through politeness and fake love. I'm not going to do that. There are times when I would have to use love and wisdom in debating, in witnessing, and yes, even in preaching. You have to do that. But here's something. If I always live my life like that, I'm a fake person. That's good, brother. I'm a fake person. Also, if I go 24-7 as this kind of attitude, my heart is not right with God. Amen. The Bible says, be angry and sin not, but what? Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Amen. See, this attitude should be used. It's rightful. The Bible says it is right to do it. But if it's your entire character 24-7, you better repent. You better get right with God.